Well, good. Yes, good morning. Good morning again. Amen. Morning. Praise God. I, uh, you know, uh, I know Pastor Gray is thanking me, but now we thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I believe when the Lord says we're supposed to be instant in season and out of season, you know, so at any moment, you know, when I heard, when I saw that that wasn't going to work, because when it turned on at home, you know, I'm like, okay, it was going to be all right. So when it got here, it wasn't that way. So God has final say. Amen? Yeah. So we thank and we praise God. And today, you know, um, you know, sometimes when you go through something, is after you go through something and it's all right, then we want to say, oh, thank the Lord. Amen? Yeah. But so I want to talk about an old flow with Thanksgiving. I was looking at, um, we were looking at something. I was, now, uh, I'm one of the people, I don't remember all the numbers when you go through the TV stations and all that. I don't remember all that. So I'm one of those that have to go from station to station to uh, channel to channel to channel, right? And so this day I was sitting there, and y'all know I had gone through some things, praise God. Uh, but I was sitting there, and all of a sudden it was on 700 Club, and it was like, stop, right? And so I just stopped, and, and this man was testifying. And I didn't know him and know nothing like that. Come to find out he was the um, uh, for the Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs football uh, team. He was the one of the mascots, right? And so they would do they do all these things, like you say, they flip and they do all kinds of stuff, you know, to draw attention to the people, to get the people to cheer and all that. And our he was saying that they were gonna try zip lining into the the from the top all the way down into the field, right? And so he he did, he had his um, mascot thing on, I don't even know what it is, but, uh, and he ziplined in, and, and that was fine. So one day he decided he was going to go and he was going to try it, find, you know, nobody was, they, well, not there, nobody was there, but he was just going to try it, but he didn't have all that stuff on. So he tried it, and the zipline broke. And he fell, he said, 70 feet. So and then when he fell, he fell amongst all the chairs and the seats and stuff down on, on the bottom. And he had a lot of damage done to his body, broken, and they were even wondering how he was still alive. And so he was in the hospital, and so he was alive, you know, so he was thankful that he was alive. But he was having a lot of pain, you know. Uh, but I thought about it later. I said, you know, there's, there's healing even in the pain. Amen. 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 And so... He was, uh, he was in a lot of pain, and he said he was sitting there, and he said he started talking to the Lord, and he said, Lord, you know, why haven't you taken away the pain? You know, he said, I'm just in such pain. Why haven't you taken away the pain? And he, he got this, this epitome from the Lord that the pain was showing that he was alive. Amen. Because a dead man can't feel pain. That's right. Amen. And so he, so the Lord started revealing to him how he needed to be thankful even for the pain. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at that because, you know, I'm having, still having some, some uh, little discomfort and pain in my shoulder and from the hip with the car, truck, and all that kind of the truck door and all that. And I was like, oh, God. You know, it was such a conviction of the Holy Spirit came upon me. Because, you know, you know, you could say, ouchie, ouchie, and oh, man, this pain. It was a form of murmuring and complaining yeah. of the pain. Uh -huh. Instead of saying, Oh, Lord, okay, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You know, I was not giving God praise because the Bible says in all things we're to give him thanks. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to talk to you. We're going to go through Colossians a little bit today in, in the book of Colossians. And we're going to see, uh, see how the ministry came to them and how it was such a ministry even unto to Paul when he realized what they had received and how they were living. Amen? And so uh, the, the Colossian believers were, we're going to start with chapter 1 of Colossians, and then we're going to go into chapter 2 also. And this is going to be a lot of y'all, I like the scriptures, so there's a lot of scriptures, there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible about giving thanks, giving praise, being grateful, you know, so I don't have, I don't have all of them, but that's, that's on the body of Christ, amen? amen. So y'all can search some more down. But the Colossian believers were filled to overflowing, the Bible said, with thanksgiving and joy when they understood something. And what they understood was God's wonderful forgiveness. And they began, after they understood that, that's when they began to live in that and live in his grace. Because the, Lord, the Bible says that Jesus came with truth and grace, right? Yes. 
So we should understand that there is a natural thing, such as automatic or, you know, I don't know, like me, I was grew up, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, you better say please and you better say thank you. Yeah. Amen. And they be looking at you, uh, 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 what? And say, huh, huh? You know, whatever, you know. And say, what do you want? Can I have, no, what? Please, can I have something, whatever, you know? So you had to say please, and then after you got it, you better say thank you. You're right, you might, it might be snatched back from you, you know what I'm saying? So that was that was something that, but there's, so there's a natural thanksgiving. There's a natural thing. It's not November, it's just only in November that we're supposed to be giving thanks. Yeah. And then there's gratitude. You know, some folk are, will say thank you, but they're not really grateful. You know, it's almost like they think that this is something you're supposed to do. You know, they might say, well, thank you for doing that, but you're supposed to do it because you're my mama. You're supposed to do it because you're my daddy. You're supposed to do it because you're my pastor. Amen? But that's not necessarily so. So gratitude and thanksgiving should travel always together. Amen? It's usually uh, things that we say thank you for for stuff that is given. Like if somebody gave me a new Bible, like my husband gave me a, a, a Schofield once years ago. Oh, goodness, it's been a long time ago. Somebody stole it, though. That, that's okay. Bless them, Lord. I said that after they, I couldn't find it. I said, well, bless them, Lord. Maybe, you know, all that writing and all that reading will help them, too, in Jesus' name. But sometimes that's the only thing that we want to say thank you for is stuff that we get, the tangible things, those things that we, we have, those things that we get. But do we have a deep down, heartfelt thanks and gratitude or gratefulness to the Lord. That's where it should start, being a Christian. You know, we were still in the world, okay, that'd be a different story, but as a Christian, our thanks should always be unto him. Amen? He is Lord and he is God. He says he will share his glory with no other. So we should not share our thanksgiving with someone else before we actually give it to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So when you were when you were up here and you were say I say, okay, Lord, sometimes you know, you know, we all do this, is gonna give a word. Oh, Lord, is this really the word that you just gave me to give? You know, we kind of wonder, you know, and then you know, then we hear something and say, Oh, thank you for confirming it, you know. But see, I thank God because He confirmed it before He confirmed it. Uh -huh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I thank God for that because I knew before I got here that this was a message that God wanted me to share. Because I remember one when I stood up here and I said, Lord, I'm just thankful that it wasn't my right arm because I'm not ambidextrous, uh -huh. right? Yes. So that I, I govern, I use this hand and this arm more already. So thank you, Lord, that it wasn't this one, but it was this one. Uh -huh. All right? Thank you, Lord. And I, you know, and I was just thinking of all that kind of ways of thanking God, you know, for what he did do and what he didn't allow to happen and even what he allowed to happen. Amen. Amen. Uh, it should be an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not a cliche. It should be an attitude of gratitude to the Lord mm -hmm. that does not depend on things or even circumstances. If nothing ever happened, if nothing ever transpired, if no circumstances, I mean, they're like joyful or bad. You know, we don't know what the day is going to hold. We should wake up saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. You know why? Because he's who he is and we're his children. Amen. We need to recognize that he rules and he governs yeah. all things. Yeah. There's nothing that he doesn't know. There's nowhere that he isn't. And there's nothing that he can't do about it. Amen. We're his children and we are the object of his love Amen. and his care. I mean, isn't that awesome to even think about how he loves us and how he cares about us? Even when we're being like the children of Israel, murmuring and complaining. Okay, so let's let's say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So in Colossians, the first chapter, verse three, he begins and it says, and I have a lot of them typed out, so I might be looking here and there. But it says, "We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you." Now, I'm going to read it again. It's going to be a little bit different. It says, we always thank God, the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. So it's like when, when you know, the heart of a pastor, a heart of an evangelist, or, or any of the fivefold, even the heart of the saints of God is that we pray one for another. Okay? We lift each other up. And then we also should thank God that that's my brother, that's my sister. 
You know, that's, you know what I'm saying? We should thank God. That's my husband. That's my wife. You know, we should thank God for what he has provided because he's yes. provided us. You know, I mean, I told my mama, I said, mama, you know what? I want some more brothers and sisters. I got one sister, no brothers, right? And I, and I, just, I told mama, I said, mama, you got to have some more babies. She said, ain't happening, boo. <laughs> you know, but that's all right because God has given me what my mama couldn't give me or didn't want to give me. God gave me, I, I don't even know all my brothers and sisters in Christ, amen? amen. So that big family I wanted, I got. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And I was so thankful when I got saved to say, wow, you know, I got that, that, that knowledge. But wait a minute, I got a lot of brothers and yeah. sisters, yeah. you know? Praise God. So I thank God that he answered that prayer even though I didn't know how he was going to do it. Amen. But he still did it. So thank you, Lord. But we, we always should thank God. We should always thank God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we pray for each other and when we just pray. Praise God. There are a lot of things that we tend to pray about. There are circumstances, situations that we see that we want God to change or intervene in. But can we tell the Lord, Lord, even though this doesn't look good or doesn't look right, I thank you. Because my eyes can discern it, so now I can even pray more. So I thank you for the eyes and heart of discernment so that I can even pray if nobody else sees it. Amen. 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 So thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord, that maybe it's happening. But we live in an evil world. Why should we be surprised when evil happens? Because we're living in an evil world. Glory to God. So that should never surprise us. Praise God. But we have the ability and the know-how because we're saved. Amen. Are we all saved in the house? Amen. Glory to God. So because God has given us that through coming to know him and getting closer to him, that we can lift up others when they don't even know how to lift themselves up. That we can preach the gospel when they don't know if they've never heard the gospel. That we can do what God has called us to do. So we need to be thankful for that. Yes. Because one ear might not hear, okay, Lord, but guess what? There's another ear that just might hear, and somebody else might have to be the laborer to cross that other person's path that didn't hear me. But thank you, Lord, that one day they're going to hear the gospel. Amen. Amen. So their hearts be pricked, just like in Colossians. Praise the name of the Lord. The faith, the Bible goes on and says, uh, we've heard of your faith because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for not just some of the saints, mm. glory to God, but for all of the saints. Now, I don't know about anybody else in the house. You know, I might want to pick and choose who I think is a saint, but I don't know who all the saints. That's right. Only God knows Amen. that. Right. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm going to thank God for all the saints that are and all the saints that are going to be. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it's like, okay, yeah, it's about how we look at it. It really is. See, the faith and the love that spring forth from our hope is stored up, glory to God. And guess where? When we cry about somebody, that faith and hope that we're crying out for somebody, guess what? Those tears are stored up around the throne of God. Amen. Yes. Isn't that something? So we yes. can say, thank you, Lord, that you even gathered my tears, that, yeah. that, that I cried for somebody, that you gathered up my tears, that I even cried for yeah. myself, yeah. glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. And one day, that's my bottle that's opening up. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. All right. So when we know the truth, the Bible's already told us that the truth does what? It Set makes it me free. free. Guess what? So if I know the truth, then somebody else can know the truth. And if it makes me free, then it can make them free too. Amen. Hallelujah. Their time may not be my time. My time may not be their time. But guess what? We can all say one day. Hmm. Because one day we all got saved. Huh. I didn't come out. I didn't pop out of Ros Rosalie's womb saved. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When I was conceived, you know, I would buy just like David said. He said, I was conceived in lust. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So guess what? Hey, I wasn't saved. I wasn't John the Baptist that jumped in the womb of Rosalie. Y'all yes. hear what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Lord God. I wasn't yeah. Jesus Christ that was in the blessed womb of, uh, of his mother Mary. But guess what? All men have sinned, the Bible says, and yes. come short of the glory of God. But one day, even the sinner is going to get saved. Amen. Because Amen. here we are. That's it. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. So thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So all over this world, the gospel is being preached. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, there's those that don't, they don't, I don't like this person, I don't like that person. They, 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 they shouldn't be doing this and they shouldn't be that. You know what? I'm getting, I'm, you know, as I'm getting older, you know, you live and you learn, you know, and as you get older, 
you learn and you start thinking about where you used to be. We was talking, I was right. talk, telling my husband, I said, you know what, uh, I was talking about my father. And I said, you know what, I don't even know why we, I started that conversation, right? And I said, you know what, I, I, I was six months old is what I'm told. I don't know how old I really was. I was just going by what someone told me that uh, my mom left my daddy because he was an alcoholic and he was abusive. Okay. All right. So I don't remember the, 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 the living with my dad. Yeah. Okay, but for six months, it was six months, six months of my life, no matter what was going on, I was I lived with my father, right? Okay, but as I grew older, I told my husband, I said, but for some reason, I said, I, I, I always loved my dad. You know, it didn't matter to me, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, it mattered in the fact that I didn't want him to drink or be an alcoholic, but it didn't matter to me when I went to see my dad. Yeah. It didn't, you know, I thought about it. All I knew is, Mom, I need my dime because I need the nickel to drive, ride the bus. That's how much it was back then. You know, I need a nickel to ride the bus, and I need another nickel because I had to get a transfer to get to on another bus to go to where he worked at because we never visited his house. You know, but I was older then, right? And so, and he would always do some of the same things, you know, he'd be, you know, I mean, you know, not putting him down, but it's just the truth, and I'm going to tell the truth no matter what. So, but it didn't, all I knew is that, hey, daddy, you know, he'd come out from back there, hey, daddy, hey, daddy, you know, and it was like, I'm glad to see my dad. Yeah. I'm glad to see my father. Yeah. So, the love that God allowed in my heart towards him was wonderful, but now did I have disappointments? Of course. Did I have uh, regrets? Something? Yes, of course. That I mean that's not, but it's not. It didn't change the fact that deep inside, but that love was there because God put that put love it there. So yeah. thank Amen. you, Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise God. And you know, and I and I, you know, you grow up and you, you know, like you say you get sassy and all this other kind of stuff. You and Granny used to say you think you're smelling yourself. You know, that's what she was. Oh, you smelling yourself? Nah, nah, girl. You know, so it was like, you know, okay, but you always got the yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You know, but. I thank God that I, I, I fellowship with him. I thank God that it was me they called to let me know that he had just died. I thank God when it was me that they called to let me know they had no, I mean, he had no insurance, you know. I thank God that God had already positioned me. Yes. So you see, you yeah. got to think about yeah. all those things have to come in play. And I say, Lord, you know what, I thank God that I was working you know, where I had, I could get a, a loan. I had the, a job where I could get a loan enough to, to bury him yes. and pay. You know, so I thank God for that. You know, we'd all been like the, you know, all those that were alcoholics on the street. You know, they all picked up money and they brought it to us in a dirty old sock. But you know what? Mm -hmm. They all brought that. They came yeah. to his funeral. Yeah. Y'all see what I'm saying? Amen. So, you know what? And I was thankful for that, for whatever they, they the nickels, the dimes, the pennies, mm -hmm. glory to God, and whatever else was in that dirty old sock. And I even thank God for that dirty old sock Amen. because that showed me that somebody loved my father. That's yeah. right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, you think about all those things and you can go back, you know what? As verse 12 says, you need to give thanks unto the Father. Amen. Amen. Because he chose me to be that person, to be able to do that. So he had to position me uh -huh. to be able to. I told my husband, I said, before my father died, I was at church from as long as I can remember, from a little bitty girl, but I didn't have enough evangelism in me to be able to share the gospel with my father. That was a regret. But I thank God. Jim said, but you don't even know who. I said, that's right, because, hey, people travel. They go they go into areas, go into places, stuff like that. You know, I have neither heaven nor hell to put nobody in. That's God's job. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I just thank God that whatever he wanted me to do, mm -hmm. and we can each say that, whatever he chose me to do, the place where I work, the places where I had to work at, the thing, the people I had to work under, the people I had to work with, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can think of some folk I didn't want to work uh, be by, but I had to work with them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I thank God for that. And I remember one man, Mr. Marshall Banks. I'll never forget Mr. Marshall Banks. He said, baby, I got you. Daughter, I got you. He said, just hang close to Marshall. And I said, yes, sir. Praise God. And he would even say, he said, no, sit up with me. You know, because he had some rank. Yeah. You know? And he knew that, you know, it wasn't that many women working out there, Vogel. And so he knew that. So I thank God for Marshall Banks. Are y'all with me? Y'all understand yeah, yeah. where I'm going, right? Mm -hmm. So we always give God thanks. 
we learned that there was a, a man of God that was sent to the Colossians. Praise God. And, and that man, Ephorus, our dear fellow servant, as the Bible calls him, he was a faithful minister of Christ. And that he went to them and he encouraged them and he preached the gospel to them so that their hearts could be pricked and hearts could be changed. All over the world, saints, God is sending someone yeah. so that these people, because he says to the very uttermost place, the gospel is going to be preached. Yes. We may not be the ones to go, but God's got somebody. Yeah. Even when he sent someone over to the Amazon area and they killed the first ones. But guess what? Didn't deter the hearts of someone else that was pricked by God to go. And they went and they went and they went. And guess what? God is still sending. So thank you, yes. Lord. Yes. Because the harvest is ready. Yeah. Yes. But guess what? The laborers are was few. Yeah. So we thank God for the many laborers that he's even raising up to go to where he wants the gospel. Because you know what? We may not know where the gospel has not been. But God knows. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, we thank God that for this reason, since the day the Bible says that he talked about the, the Colossian church, to say, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. Yes. So when we hear about somebody that just gave their life to Christ or they came back to Christ, don't stop praying for them. We, I don't take stuff out of the prayer box. Why? Because we don't know what else might transpire. That person that we prayed for might have got their victory, but the enemy's always going to come around to try to snatch the victory. Okay. Amen? Okay. So what do we do? We don't stop praying for you. And we don't stop asking God to fill with you with the knowledge of his will through our wisdom, spiritual wisdom, and spiritual understanding. Thank you, Lord. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. Not just so we can have something. You know, no, no, no. God, that's, that. you know, we work to take care of our stuff and our, yeah, but that's, 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 that's just, that's just the way that thing is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. But the spiritual blessings of God are more important than any other blessing financially that we could have. Come on. Hallelujah. So we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord yes. and that you may please him in every way. Yes. Bearing fruit in every good work. Growing in the knowledge of God. Being strengthened with all power. I'm going all the way through 3 to 14. Praise God. From 1, 3 through 14. And jumping through different scriptures. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the Bible keeps on and says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and great patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Lord. We shouldn't have to give a sacrifice of praise. We shouldn't have to. We should be joyful and saying, yeah, I'm ready. Like, like, like pastor was up here jumping and crying out, I want to jump over there. Glory to God. You know, Hallelujah. Because we should be joyful. Rejoice in the Lord. Yeah. Always. Always. And again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice. Yeah. The word rejoice means to have joy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And again, have some joy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is what? Our My strength. strength. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So joyfully thanking him. Having endurance and having patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us, say thank you Lord, thank you, Lord. from the dominion of darkness yes. and brought us into the kingdom of his son. He loves in whom we have our redemption yes. and the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you Lord. In Colossians the second chapter, verses six to seven. Glory to the Lamb. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7, it says unto us, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So now he says, abounding in your thanksgiving. That means abound means to have over and above. Glory to God. Amen. So that in, a, in another version, it says it like that. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with 
thanksgiving. Can we say amen? Amen. Say amen. 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 So let's pray this. Say with me. Father God, Father God I thank you, I thank you. Today. today. Help me remember those things that I should have given you praise for. And I didn't. And I ask you to forgive me for not doing so. So Lord, as I overflow with thanksgiving, I thank you, Lord, for all things for this day. And thank you, Lord, for bringing to my remembrance those things I need to thank you for. Amen? Amen. Okay, one phrase that I want to touch on is in Colossians 2, verse 7, is the set, the phrase in, in another term, uh, in, in uh, King James, it says, abounding therein with thanksgiving, and in the, amp, uh, not the amp, it was in the NIV, it said, uh, overflowing with thanksgiving. Okay? Overflowing. Overflowing. That means it ain't just like to here, it should come up and all the way out. Amen? <laughs> overflowing with thanksgiving. So, what is thankfulness or thank being thankful? Defined. It means to be conscious of benefits received, expressive of thanks, well pleased, delighted, glad, gratified, happy, joyful, joyous, pleased, and satisfied. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, when I looked at that, I said, wow, Lord, you know what? Sometimes we're not satisfied with what we already have. It's always a more, a more, a more. But I gotta begin. He's not that he won't give us more. I'm not saying that. But it's not, if I'm not thankful for what I have already, how am I gonna really thank him for what I get when it comes over? Amen. Amen. I need to begin where I am. Amen. Because there's a beginning and there's always going to be an ending. So I need to begin. Thank. I don't care. You know, I remember when I used to work at Mobile Oil. Okay. I started out in Mobile Oil at $6.25 an hour. And I, it was like, wait a minute. How many years I've been going for Mobile and it was only $7 and some cent an hour for, uh, for, for regular uh, pay? For people, I'm like, what? There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong. But I said, Lord, but I thank you because before I went to mobile, I was making three dollars and something an hour. All right. So it's like I paid double. You understand know what I'm saying? Right. So I was like, real thankful. I could buy a car. I could rent my own house. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's making up. Six months later, we went on strike. <laughs> but you know, I thank God for the strike. I'm like, okay, Lord, I thank God because they said you can go get food stamps. I said, I went down there, they gave me $35 worth of food stamps. So I said, well, Lord, you know what? My mama house always got food. Amen. So thank you for, for food at my mama house, my grandmama house, my great grandmother house, you know, because they always were there. And so I still had something to be thankful for. Amen. Even if <laughs> all the money I saved up, I had to spend it. That's okay. You know, because God had even provided that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So it's being conscious. You know, having a conscious mind of the benefits that you already have and those that you're going to yet receive. Yes. Girl, amen. Amen. And to be pleased about it. And be grateful to the Lord for what he has given. Amen. amen. We should pay attention to what the Bible has to say as it relates to to us, the Christian believer, and the matter of having a thankful and a, grat a heart of gratitude. So, of course, you know I'm going to look up the word gratitude. Amen. So, gratitude means this. It means the state of being grateful, thankfulness, appreciation, appreciativeness, and gratefulness. Mm -hmm. So, with a heart and an attitude of gratitude and a heart of thanksgiving, we need to say, Lord, forgive me. Because I didn't always be thankful. Mm -hmm. I didn't always give you glory no matter what transpired, no matter what was going on. I didn't always, I, 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 I didn't thank God when I lived, when I had a, a, my, the first man that I was married to was abusive. I didn't thank God because he was abusing me. But now I can thank God because God delivered me. Yeah. But he also used yeah. that testimony yeah. on how to help That's somebody right. else. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So we don't always see it. Yeah. But we need to thank him yet in the midst of it because there is a greater plan that's being worked. Amen. And when we thank God and say, Lord, no matter what, I'm not going to stop praising you. Amen. I told my that, that abusive man because I used to fight if I had to go to church. I said, no matter what, I was raised in the church. I'm going to church. Amen. I didn't know about deliverance. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. So we need to have that. That thankfulness and gratefulness because guess what? I could have died with the guns put to my head or the knives to my throat. I could have easily have died at any one of those times. But God. Hallelujah. 
Right. Glory to the Lamb. So Paul is writing to the Colossian believers who have come to faith in Christ. Even though I was in the Baptist church, and I usually don't say all that, but in the Baptist church as a little bitty girl waddling in because you were going no matter what. You wouldn't know I'm not going to nobody church. No, that wasn't going to happen. No, I mean, some people let their children do that today. I nope. That's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, praise God. That was just the way it is. So, so the words and the seeds that I may not even understood that were being planted at the time that I was there, guess what? There was going to be a blessing to my soul. Guess what? At the point of time, there was some fruit that came up from those seeds, even in the Baptist church. Yes. That's all right. Hallelujah. Because one thing they will teach about save a salvation. That's right. They got Come on that. now. Hallelujah. They talk about Jesus, and at the last, they hung about Jesus still. Guess yeah. what? So you recognize he went to the cross. Yes, he right. did. Mm -hmm. did. Before he even got to the cross, he had to come to this earth. They preached about that. Yeah. Guess what? We knew that Jesus was my Savior. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even if I didn't live like I was saved. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But one day, that seed, that fruit kept getting watered and kept getting watered and kept getting watered till something happened yes. in my life Amen. to put me in a position to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank, you, Lord. Lord. thank you, Lord. So in that, the ministry of this man of God, Aphorus, which mentions, was mentioned in chapter 1, verse 7 that, earlier, this fellow servant of God, this faithful minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, has been the one that was established the church there in Colossae. Right. He ministered and he preached because Paul couldn't be there. And Paul heard about it. That's right. Glory to God. You know, people hear about your salvation. That's right. Then they look to see if you're really saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And glory to God. Keep on looking. One man told me one time, because I I mean back in the day, 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 you know, I mean I I, I you know I thought I could sing a little bit, you know, so me and this group of little young ladies. You know, me and Dorothy, and I don't know why we be called no names. But anyway, and we was like, we, was, we didn't call ourselves the Supremes, but we sung like the Supremes. <laughs> okay? And, you know, and so one day I'm sitting, I'm in, in, in mobile oil, and I'm saved now. I'm in mobile oil, and this guy comes in, you know, deliver something, and he sees me, he say, Alberta? And I said, yeah. He said, you don't, you remember, yeah, I always say you don't remember me, you know, but they always speak that curse on you. He didn't ask me, did I remember him? He said, you don't remember me. So now that's a curse. If you need to break that curse and somebody say you don't remember me, okay? Y'all got that right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I told him, I said, yeah, I remember you. And so he said, wow, girl, it's been so long. I remember. I remember. Now here it comes. I remember when you used to sing. Boy, y'all used to sing. Boy, y'all was down. Y'all could have been Y'all could have been as famous as the Supremes and all. And I remember, boy, you used to sing and you used to do all. And I said, yeah. I said, well, hold up, bro. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh -huh. I say, yeah, you remember then. But you don't know me now. Nah. I said, let me introduce no, myself to you. Nah. Amen. Nah. Praise God. I said, because see, now I'm changed. Nah. Hallelujah. Thank so you. he stood there and he listened. Amen. Yeah. He didn't want to listen long, but he listened. Glory to <laughs> God. Amen. Praise God. So that someone had, had preached to me, but there was a change. So there was a notice of the change of the people in Colossians. Yeah. Glory to God. It can want to say, this man of God was faithful in his ministry. And the word got back to Paul's ears. So Paul wrote about it. He recognized that because of all that Jesus had become to them, there was change. He recognized that the things that he heard about, that there was a mark that was on them, and that mark was the mark of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then in them, there were characteristics that manifested in them, and the one characteristic or two of the characteristics that manifested in them was a grateful heart uh -huh. and thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So he anticipated in over in chapter 2, verse 7, that when people uh, get bumped, the real you going to come out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a Christian, it should be, oh, excuse me, thank the Lord. Uh -huh. Bless the Lord. Amen? But if it's not, the, if you're, you're not operating in the, in the uh, I'm a Christian group, glory to God, it's going to be a whole lot. What you think? What, did you not see me? Right. You know? And then there's a, a manifestation of what's inside that we need to be set free from. Yes. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So now, what will spill out? What comes up and comes out when you just bumped? Is it Thanksgiving? Is it gratitude that God might have had you right there to get bumped so you'll be the one to preach to the person that bumped you? Ah, right? In part, at least, 
some kind of praise, some kind of thanksgiving, and not a cuss word should pop out of the mouth of a saint of God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You shouldn't be saying, oh, you want some of this? <laughs> Come on, y'all understand what I'm saying? No, I'm a Christian. Glory to God, I'm a child of the Lamb. And then, no, that person said, well, you know what, I'm so sorry. It, 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 it's just something about you. And then, open, boom, open the door. Well, let me tell you about what it really is. Yeah. See, y'all hear we gotta, we gotta change the environment uh -huh. around us. Sometimes it's just shutting up, being quiet, yes. and saying yay or nay or nothing at all. Yes, sir. All right? Yes. It's clear concerning character because we are not to be filled with bitterness, not to be filled with anger, hatred, evil speaking, railing accusations. I see someone, I'm saying, no, they, they, they either they ain't being taught, they in the word, or they not saved. Amen. This is the way it is. Bible says it like this. Blessings and cursings should not proceed out of the mouth of a child of God. Amen. 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 So now if pride is manifesting, huh, hardiness is manifesting, Amen. envy or jealousy is manifesting, ingratitude, ungratefulness, unthankfulness, no thought of heart of even being thankful, then it's actually what the Bible is talking about in Timothy. We're going to get to that later. Amen. Amen. Something that we say lives in us, who is that? What is that? The Holy Spirit abides within me. The Father abides in me. Jesus, the tri come on now, the triune beings abide the fullness of the Godhead because where the Father is, the Son is. Where the Son is, the Holy Ghost is. Amen. There's representation. And then he calls us to be ambassadors yes. of Christ. That means we're supposed to represent. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So now, what spills out? Is it my Christianity, or is it my thankfulness, or is it my flesh? But Paul heard about these people over in Colossae, speaking to the Christians and admonishing them. He said, you know what, I just want to encourage you that guess what? I know about the change. I know about you being thankful. I know, I've heard it. I'm not even in the midst of you, but I heard about it. I know about it. Because once it's shown and seen, somebody's going to tell somebody, and somebody's going to tell somebody, and somebody's going to tell somebody. Amen. Amen. And just the other way around, they call themselves a Christian. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So now when, Bi when the Bible tells us that we're supposed to be thankful, that means there's a, there's a, a whole different attitude and demeanor about me when I'm thankful or I'm grateful or I'm praising God or, or something else is going on with me that says, you know what, I'm living the life of Christ. It's going to be seen. And Paul said he admonished them what he has come to know about them because of their actions, because of what someone saw. Paul says, I want to ensure that you folks are marked by this thankfulness. He actually mentions it again and again in verse 12 of chapter 1. Giving thanks to the Father. In verse 7 of chapter 2. Then in chapter 3 and chapter 3 and verse 15, he ends with the phrase, be thankful. Verse 16, 16 says, singing with gratitude or thankfulness in your hearts to God. Verse 17 says, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In chapter 4, verse 2, it says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and being thankful. Amen. Hallelujah. And in all of this, the overspill of this overflow through the Colossian Christians was marked by this thankful heart that they showed forth. Right. Wow. Wow. I say, wow, hmm. glory to God. I mean, I'm talking about my brothers and sisters in Christ, y'all. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because right. the church of Colossae, when they became children of God, they are our brothers and they are our sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The word that he uses for overflowing is a fairly common word, right? But Paul uses it not infrequently. It's a Greek verb that you find, for example, at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. This is what he says, where he says that he wants them in light of all that Jesus is to them by way of the resurrection to be abounding. That overflowing word, that mean that the that word abounding means the overflow and the work of the Lord. And the word there translated abounding is the same Greek word Per is sisu. It's the word that is used for overflow. 
or overflowing. It's the same word that's used in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, where he speaks about the grace of God overflowing in them and through them to the glory of God. Amen? Because, see, the, the ministry had to go to the church of Corinthians because they, they were something else over there in Corinthians. Praise God. But in Corinth. So the word gave, came to them, and the Bible says that when Paul wrote a letter to the church of Corinthians, their hearts were pricked. He said, I didn't want to have to write this letter, but I had to write this letter because of what I heard uh -huh. that was going on in the church of Corinth. Yeah. He said, so when he found out that their hearts had been pricked and they went to into sorrowful repentance because conviction came, yes. glory to God, and they changed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's the same word about overflowing where he speaks about the grace of God overflowing in the church of Corinth and through them to the be to so that God can get the glory. Yes. Can we say amen? amen? It's the same word. That same word. Uh, per is C. I had to type it out so I could actually pronounce it. Per is C U. Glory to God. And it says, goes on in John 10 10, where Jesus said unto us, the body of Christ, that he hath come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. That word there for abundantly or more abundantly is the same root word that's used for overflowing. Amen. Amen. So the Christians in Colossae, as a result of their union or relationship or fellowship with Christ, guess what? They are, we are, to be overflowing with thanksgiving. Yes. Hallelujah. It's not something that I can choose just any old kind of time I want to, guess what? It should just something that should pop up out of me. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. You know, some folks can get kind of religious with it. I know, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm not talking about just saying praise the Lord. I'm talking about actually not only just saying something, but actually knowing it's like there. It's just yes. like nobody else has to know it, but I know it. Amen. I know it. Hallelujah. And guess what? Just like it was seen in Colossae and even in Corinthians, guess what? When we know it, guess what? Somebody Amen. around us. Right. It's going to know it also. Amen. Isn't that awesome? It's all right. I mean, that's awesome to me. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, because of that relationship. So that means they must have been getting in the Word. Because the relationship is established through the studying of the word of God and coming to know who we say we serve. And guess what? And then we come to know about, oh, man, these are the Christians over there in Colossae. These were the Christians in Ephesians. These were the Christians in Corinthians. And on and on in Galatians. And on. Wow, look what happened. Oh, look what God told them. They're not supposed to be doing it. Look what God told them. They want me to do it. Look what God told me. What I'm not supposed to be doing. Amen. Because God wants to, Jesus came that we might have what? Life. And have that kind of life, how? Overflowing. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. So the foundation, the distinction, and the expression of our thankfulness goes to who? To God. Amen. So there's a foundation that has to be established. In Colossians 2, verse 6, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord. Just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord. Which takes us back to Colossians 1, verse 6. And to what we read, notice in verse 6 of chapter 1, he says, this gospel, not just any gospel, but this gospel has come to you as a result of it coming to them, they bore fruit. Amen. There was something that was, that, that when that word got implanted and then they kept getting and kept watering and kept watering, something manifested in them where, guess what, all around them somebody saw it and it was reported to uh, the Apostle Paul. Glory to the Amen. Lamb. So when this gospel has come, has the gospel come to us? Amen. It's coming every day. Amen. As a result of it coming to us, we are to bear fruit. Fruit within us should overflow out of us. Guess what? Thank you, Lord. And this is ever since they heard it, still in chapter 6 of chapter 1. Verse 6 of chapter 1. And they understood. See, see, we don't just want to read something. We need to get a good understanding. We need to have wisdom and knowledge and a good understanding of what we're receiving. Yes. Guess what? It's just like if I eat a steak that has no season on it, I know the difference from a steak that has a lot of season on yes. it. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. So we are supposed to be seasoned with salt. Amen. If you use kosher salt, you're going to find that kosher salts get saltier than regular salt. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You can marinate a steak in some kosher salt overnight. That steak will come out just as tender the next day and season all inside. Yeah. Amen. 
The difference. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. God is trying to season us so that we can be not just like the Colossian brothers and sisters, but we can be like what he's called us to be and represent yes. ambassadors of the Lord God most high. Amen. Glory to God. So the, he was describing to the people the change of the Colossian church. Yeah. He, he, he says, I, I, I'm describing the shift, the, the change, the shifting from being... Uh, no religion or irreligious to having some type of religion but not just religion but coming into the knowledge so that the change can be real and the change can start staying. See some folk get it and they might lose it because guess what that seed is not being that seed that hit that ground is not being watered not being uh, what they can do their own water somebody always want to wait for somebody else that's right. you know what no we water the word that's in us by studying the word of God it was steady water, steady water, steady water. Guess what? Something's going to happen if they got some seed in there. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And guess what? God says that's what happened here in, 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 the, in this town. <laughs> Glory to God. They began, this man of God says, you know what? I guess I'm the one. And he went. And he started ministering to them. He began to tell them about Jesus Christ's name. He began to tell them that he, what had happened. He told them about the prophecies that were spoken about this man that came and this man that was coming that was going to save the world. He told them how he was despised. He told them how he was rejected by the people. He told them how he hung on the cross. He told them. And he ministered to them about Jesus Christ. Just like on the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up and they stood up with Peter, the Bible says he started talking about what happened with the, what the prophet spoke about. And he started telling them about this is the man, the man that I'm telling you about, he's already come. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And on that day, over 3,000 souls got saved. Amen. Glory to God. We're talking about Peter, the one that denied Jesus Christ. How many times? Three. Come on. But on that day, there was no denying on that day, he was full of the Holy Ghost, and he knew that I had been with Jesus. I knew what he taught me, and guess what? Today is the day that I'm going to be the one that's going to stand. I Thank you, Lord, for not denying me. Thank you, Lord, for not going me to the side. Thank you, Lord, yeah. that even though I denied you three times, you still chose me Amen. for this day. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. To know that our Lord and Savior bore the sacrifice of sin. To know that he took our sins upon him, yeah. yet he was sinless. Yeah. If any man or man or woman would turn to him in repentance and confession of their sins in faith, that they could have this peace of God and this reality of a holy one. The power that worketh in their lives is going gonna, gonna to be different. And the numbers of the people in the Colossian Valley, their hearts were pricked, their hearts were touched, and they turned. They turned, and they turned away from something evil, and they turned to the faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Guess what, saints? They understood the story about the master. They understood that with him there was light and there was life. They understood that they received that, and when they received that, they received some joy. Glory to God. And they started praising and started thanking God. Thankful that someone shared the gospel with them. I mean, that's that. Uh, yes. But do we understand the story? Mm -hmm. Do we understand and realize that that was good news? You know, it seems gross and it seems horrible, this, but it was good news yes. that he took stripes on his back. That it was good news that he went to the cross and they nailed him. It was good news that they, they put a thorn on. That was good news, even though it didn't look like good news. Yes. It didn't seem like good news. It's, you know, they say, Lord, if I'd have been there, I'd have took Jesus off the cross. No. No. If the demons had known that it was Christ, they would not have done what they did. But no, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, because he was the one that had to pay for our debt that we owe. He was the one that had to pay the penalty just for us. And those that are yet coming, come on, because yes. he ain't through yet, saints. He's not through saving. Yes. Right. He's not through saving. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes. If someone turns us to the Bible, or we start studying the Word of God, I mean really studying the Word of God, sometimes you say, well, I don't know how to study. Just read. Just begin reading. Just read. 
The Holy Ghost will revelate the word. They're going to be, I mean, or listen. Sometimes, you know, stick a tape in or a CD now, okay? <laughs> you know, stick it in there. That's a, of, the, of the gospel. Because faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Read you, reading the word of God, read it out loud. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen? So something changed. I don't want to be, and I know nobody in here wants to be alienated from the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay? No, no, no. We don't want to know that, that, you know, I'm still an enemy of God because my mind and my heart has not been changed. That I'm still operating in my evil behavior. I'm still using words that I shouldn't, words going places I shouldn't go, being with folk I shouldn't even be with. Come on, no. It's called a trifold curse. Uh -huh. I don't want to be under a curse of being alienated from God, having uh, been in alignment with my enemy, glory to God, and being in alignment with my enemy, who is our enemy now, bless what, and then have on my account my sinful, ungodly behavior. Yeah. That's a trifold curse, my, my, my. and we don't want that, amen? That's right. So we break that trifold curse right Thank now Jesus. in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank we cancel that ungodly alienation from God. Thank you, Lord, that we are as open door to be drawn closer to you, Father. Yeah, yeah. We break the power in the hole of enemies of our mind, yeah, yeah. enemies surrounding us that, that's trying to pull us away from God. We break that hole and card and tie and ungodly soul tie in Jesus' yeah. name. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord God, as we repent of our sinful behavior. We repent of our evil yeah. of behavior. We repent, Lord God, yeah. and ask you, Lord God, here we are. Change yeah. us, Lord God. Help us to be all that you called yeah. us to be. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Some folks think that they can do anything and they still good enough. That, no, no, no. I'm here to tell you, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible said, and even Jesus said, says, none is good but the Father in heaven. He said, I'm not going to call me good. He said, because I'm, I'm in this flesh thing, and guess what? The temptation can still come even though he was Jesus Christ. Amen? Glory to God. But he didn't yield to the temptation because of his holiness and his love for his father. He said, I didn't come to do my will. Yes. I came to do the will of my father. So I'm going to be an obedient child. Yes. Glory to the Lamb. Yes. Hallelujah. So no, 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 no. There's only one that's good. Yes. No matter how much good we might do, how much stuff we might do, how many people we might feed or help and all that, our good will never be good enough. It's only through the acceptance of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, but Sister Bird, I don't go to the clubs and, and I don't drink alcohol and I don't cuss. Yeah, okay, uh huh. Yeah. Well, maybe you don't use profane words, but guess what? You might be cussing this person over here. Yeah, staff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little slander, a little railing accusation. You know what? I come to realize that sin is still sin. Yeah. yeah. No matter what sin it is, yeah. we can't divide sin unless we get out of sin. Yeah. He took, he spoke to to uh, Cain. He said, "Cain, don't you know you have authority over sin? Nah. Why are you let sin have rule and rank over you? Nah, and then nah, you go nah, and you nah. want to kill your brother? Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes. My God, my God." So, guess what, saints? I don't care what they say. They think they might be good enough. Guess what? They'll never be good enough unless they represent Jesus Christ as Savior. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's just honesty. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to the Lamb. So, we thank God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who shall not only deliver us, but has delivered us and continually delivering us in Jesus' name. Over in Romans, the seventh chapter, we see Paul. Paul said he declared that there was a war in his members. Did he not? Yeah. And see, I typed up that scripture. I want to read it, praise God. But there was a war that was going on in his members. Hallelujah. And he, But in the end, no, because I just want to read the, the last two verses, 24 and 25. And he said this, but he gave thanks. He said, there was said this, 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 this stuff that's just raging in me. It's out of control sometimes, hallelujah. But guess what? He realized that there was one he could call on, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? He says, oh, wretched man, he recognized that I'm not good enough. Yeah. I don't care how much I done wrote, three quarters, whatever. I, I, it's still not good enough, God, and I'm a wretched man that I am. But who shall deliver me from this body of death? In verse 25 it says, I thank God. Woo! Through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's awesome to me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah. So then with the mind, I might serve the law of God. But with the flesh, I'm serving the law of sin. Yeah. So I know that I have a deliverer uh -huh. yeah. that can deliver me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If someone needs to know this, guess what? Turn them to the word of 
God. Yes. Not, yeah, I mean, we watch the news. I watch the news, you know. Because, I mean, I don't know what's happening up down these streets. They had stuff going on right down, right up, right down. Uh, somebody was walking in somebody's neighbor, in my name, our neighbors, not too far from us, backyard, scoping out their stuff. Mm. You know, and then end up stealing. I mean, it's like stuff going on all around us. Okay, we may, we don't know all about all that stuff. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. So I said, well, Lord, thank you for the news. Yes. Because that tells me, no, no plague gonna come near my dwelling place. No. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I don't want it. Up, I don't want it. Up, I don't want it up and down my street. That's right. I don't want it in my neighbor's right. backyards or my their yard. So guess what? I can pray for my neighborhood Amen. and thank God for protecting our neighborhood. Amen. Amen. When other places flooded, I'm not. We not. The, you know, we're we're nobody special. Uh, well, we're special in God, yes. but it's no difference or respect the person with God. You know, it didn't flood in my in our neighborhood. Yes. It didn't come past our. But I mean, I say, well, Lord, you know, I thank you that I've walked that perimeter so many times with all of my feet. Thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, didn't come past the, the, the mailbox. But you know what? Other people's houses flooded. Lord, why did their house flood and not my house? I don't know. I don't know. It's not just because I'm a child of God. Come on. Yeah. You know, and I shouldn't even say that. Well, I'm a child of God and I pray. I pray. Okay, yes, you did. But what if you prayed and your house would have still flooded? Uh -huh. Then what you going to say? What? Come on now. Amen. No, I'm thankful, Lord, that my house didn't flood. Yeah. See, because when we start saying it certain ways, yeah. that's a that's a pumped upness. That's a pride. Yeah. That, that's no humility yeah. in that. No, thank you, Lord, yeah. that I, I'm away from my house and it's flooding and the hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And I get to back to my house and, Lord, you protected my home. Jesus, yes. Mm -hmm. It's all right. So we need to have that heart of humility and thanksgiving unto the Lord. Yes. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstance is. See that, you know, it's like one time I was in here ministering to a young lady on a Tuesday night, on a Wednesday night, and me, it's just me and her, and we walked out to the, you know, she was going through something, and we walked out to the, to the door, she had made a decision about uh, uh, her abusive husband, and then we we standing out there, this is honestly not true, we standing out there locking up the gate, and she turns, and all of a sudden, there he is, he goes down the street, turns around, goes back down the street, turns around, and comes back down the street. She said, why is he doing that? Why is he doing it? I said, instantly in my spirit, the Lord says to tell her, this is just a test. Uh -huh. Are you going to pass the test? Uh -huh. Because it's not about what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's about what you do. That's right. Amen? Uh -huh. And she looked at me, and she said, okay, Lord. Because her emotions had started to rage. Y'all yeah. yeah. understand? But now, guess what? I was there at the right moment at the right time. So I said, sister, I said, I, I said what I felt in my spirit. This is just a test. God says, are you going to pass the test? And she passed the test. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So I, I, we, 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 when we stop and we think, you know, in a moment, in a, in a moment, something could transpire. In a moment, something can happen. You know, we look at John 10.10. 10, the beginning of the John 10.10 10 tells us the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Okay? That's just a warning. That's not to make me fearful. That's not to, but that's to make me aware. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because the second part is the part that's just supposed to resonate more in my spirit. Amen. Jesus tells me, say Jesus tells me, Jesus that, tells me he came, that he came, that I might have life, and, have life. and that I'm going to have it more abundantly. Full and overflow in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. So I'm not going to alienate my, myself from the Lord. I'm going to get as close to him as I can. I want fellowship with my Lord. I want relationship with my Lord. I want that. Because if I can have relationship with him, then I can surely have relationship with others. Amen. And it's going to be a good relationship. Shouldn't be strength. You know, they might be saying all kinds of stuff that just might want to make my emotions rage. You know, I can step back for a minute uh -huh. and I can just stop. And I said, devil, you're alive. Not today. Mm -hmm. I had a man six foot tall in jail, six foot something, you know, stand over me. And instantly in my spirit, I, it was like, he's like, he's, he's acting out like the enemy, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And today he wants to try to devour you. This is not my job. And I looked up at him. And I stepped back, I said, this is your area of, of work, I'm going to mine. And I left. Next day, I mean, I had a good night's sleep. Next day he told the boss, he said, I didn't sleep at all last night. Uh -huh. That wasn't a song, he said, I didn't sleep at all last night. 
you know. Yeah. And so when he when he, when they called me in, he told him, you know, when he called me in there, and they say, oh, well, Alberta, uh, he says such and such and such and such, and I said, but my uh, head tester was there. He said the only thing I saw Alberta do was go over there. Nobody else went over there to help him. She went over there to help him because he came in late, mm -hmm. and he was running behind on this on, on the test, and I didn't I, I didn't have to say one lonely word. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know what? And, I, and so they say, well, you got anything to say? I said, well, if I hurt or offended him in any kind of way, I looked at him and I said, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The demons in him, it looked like you could see smoke coming out of his ears. He got up and he stomped out the room. The bosses looked at each other. They looked at me and they said, well, Albert, I guess you're just going to do your job. And I said, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then later on, uh, this man came to me and and. and you know, I was ready to well, hit a knife. I had to hit him. I ain't gonna lie. But uh, I, I was not at that time. I ain't gonna lie because it's big man. You know, and I'm, you know, I couldn't get. There was no area to run from where he was blocking my way out, and there was no way out but the way. So if I had to go through him, I was gonna go through him. Okay, I ain't gonna lie about that. But God had purpose for me to be working in that area at that point in time because of the fact that he came and he had to. He asked me a question. And he said, he said, I'm, he said, I just want to tell you I'm sorry. He said, my, my ex-wife died, my son's mom died, and I, and I just didn't know, I don't know how to tell my son that his mother's dead. And thank God I had my, I always carried my little Bible, I opened up the word, I said, Ecclesiastes, the Bible says, there's a time to live, yeah. there's a time to die. Yeah. And he went and took my Bible and made copies of that. Yeah. Amen? So I thank God that even though he might have been mad the first day, you know, I thank God that he came for, he was mad, well, evidently that morning was when he found out the day he was going through his changes, and then the next day, you know, he was still going through changes, and so, but God had a word to give to him, to be able to give to his son. So, like I say, we, we have to be ready, but in all things, no matter what, we need to give thanks. See, the devil don't want us to thank God. He doesn't want us, and we're going through the many other trials of the trials and temptations and, 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 and afflictions of the righteous. He doesn't want us to say, Lord, I'm going to thank you no matter what's going on. Yeah. He doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to curse God and be like Job. And that's Job's wife told Job, curse God and die. He wants us to be like that. But see, God is looking for that righteous man and that righteous woman, just like he did in Corinthians, I mean, in the Corinthians, and just like he did in the church of uh, Colossae, where there was a recognition of the change. Hmm. Even though there might be wars that's raging, that's what, there's going to be a change because we're believing God, amen? And we need to thank God. No, Lord, there's wars that's raging. Thank you, Lord. I don't know why they're raging, but thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen? See, the enemy is going to always try us, the saints of God. So it's up to who to stand against the things of the enemy. It's up to us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I just want to, want to find a prayer, and I want to stop. I have a prayer in here. Amen. Praise God. So I pray that today that, that, that you know, it made some kind of sense. <laughs> Amen. Praise God that, that, um, that as children of God, we're not to look at things one way only. Amen. That our eyes and our ears should be open to the Holy Spirit. And to the Holy Spirit, the one that's going to lead us and guide us in all truth and all righteousness. Uh, one more scripture and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pray. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18-23, Pastor Jimmy gave the scripture of the day. It tells us, in everything, we ought to give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Then verse, verse 19 says, we are not supposed to quench the Holy Spirit. 20 says, we're not supposed to despise prophesying. 21 says, we are to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. 22 says we are, are to abstain from all appearance of evil. And 23 says, and the very God of peace will say, now when we do all that, it says the very God of peace, the very God of peace sanctifies you wholly. That's the whole person. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say with me, Lord, Lord, I want to stop being ungrateful. I want to stop being ungrateful.
I want to start being thankful. I want to start being thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That I've heard the word of truth. I've heard the word of truth. I've been given grace with the truth. I don't want to be alienated from my God. I need reconciliation and restoration in the fullness of relationship with my Father. I thank you, Lord, that even though once upon a time I lived in darkness, but now, Lord, you have given me light. And I thank you, Lord, that I was even once trapped by the works of the enemy happening in my life. But I can declare even today that the Lord has set me free. I was once dead, but you made me alive. And Lord, every day, if I just think on these things, I can have a reason to praise you and to give you thanks. I thank you, Lord, that when I wake up every morning, my mercies are new. I thank you, Lord, that you have purpose for me. So when I wake up, I'm going to wake up with purposeness and perpetual thanks to you, Almighty God. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, because you are clothed with honor and honesty and majesty. You cover yourself with light as with a garment. You walk upon the wings of the wind. When we reflect on the glory of your majesty, we're filled with wonder at the vastness of your condensation. For you consent, condescend, consented, condemned, y'all know what I'm trying to say. He came down even to behold the things that are in heaven. So when I look up, you look up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for such a blessing to be a child of God. And I thank you, Lord, that as a child of God, I desire to be all that you've called me to be. But I want to be, first and foremost, a child of praise. I want to be, first and foremost, a child of thanksgiving. And I thank you, Lord, that you've been mindful of me. Thank you, Lord, because you decided to visit me. So we rejoice that we are under the governance of you, Almighty God, who is not only almighty, but Lord, you're perfect, you're holy, you're righteous, you're wise, and you are always good. And that all the things of this world are appointed and they're already arranged by your way. That you govern even the numbers of the hairs of my head. And that even when a sparrow falls, you won't allow him to fall to the ground. And so Lord, I thank you that you won't allow me to fall. <coughs> thank you Lord for helping me. Thank you Lord for loving me. I bless you. I thank you for the truth, for your grace, and for your mercies. And if I'm called by your word, then Lord, thank you for renewing what needs to be renewed in my heart, in my soul, or in my spirit by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that if I'm justified, then thank you, Lord, for freely receiving your grace through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord, that's in you that we live and in you that we move and we have our being and that your goodness has always been and will always be near us. And we say thank you. God bless you richly. Amen. Thank you. Amen.